He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. The biggest news in years on world government. They're actually doing it. We have the G20 document that's been released by the London Guardian. We have the, the article in the AP and the Guardian. They are packaging it and pushing it as if it's a way to get back at the big banks, to make them pay their own way, to make them pay taxes. When the big mega central banks wrote this, and when you read it, it allows them to levy taxes value added on all financial transactions, not just banks, on your check, on what you cash, on your stocks, on your bonds, on credit unions. The big banks wrote this, but just like in 1913, they were able to take over our issuance of currency and credit from the Congress, which is illegal and unconstitutional. They pushed that through as an anti-banking bill to punish the bankers, the robber barons. And here's Gordon Brown in November, in December, and in January. It's all in the article saying, this is global government, this is world government, this will punish the banks, when the banks wrote this. That's how they do it. They use deception. And in England and in Europe and in the United States, they are trying to pass, quote, banking reform bills that they admit in these articles and in the document plug into the international agreement. The new bank of the world, global governance is here. We're going to be covering that more later. Meanwhile, GOP seeks SEC records on Goldman Sachs between them and the White House. So the plot is thickening uh, on that front. Now, I want to get into the latest developments dealing with the tea parties. It's very elementary. What's happening is the system is coming out and saying, if you criticize the private banks, if you criticize the private Federal Reserve, if you criticize the banker bailouts, if you criticize that they won't tell Congress where trillions of dollars went, if you do that, you're basically a terrorist. And I don't have to tell you this is going on. Anybody who listens to radio, anybody that reads the newspaper, anybody who spends any time uh, watching the news knows this is everywhere. I mean, I hardly watch any television every time I turn it on, when I'm on the treadmill or late at night or the YouTube videos I've sent by listeners. It's just 24-7 saying that all the Tea Parties are racist, the American people are evil. What does racism have to do with not wanting to pay trillions to foreign banks? What does racism have to do with not wanting the government to take over health care and cut benefits out of the American people when the insurance companies actually wrote the scam. You've heard Ron Paul here on the show document that. It's not just me saying that. You heard Lord Moncton last week agree. Anybody who's read the bill, and I have, that's what it does. Now, these are just three video clips and audio clips from just the last two days. Here's one article. CFR journalist calls Tea Party talk seditious, illegal. And uh, that's Joe Klein, Council on Foreign Relations member. If you read the public bi-monthly book, they put a book out on newsstands, not a newspaper, not a magazine, it's a book. It's a paperback book calling for world government and telling you how great it is. He's saying it is seditious to criticize the government. Then we've got a clip of Michael Savage, a new clip, not, not, not the last two clips where he said Obama will blow up a Capitol building or carry out a Reichstag attack to set up martial law, which I agree. Now he's talking about the Tea Parties, where the Democrats have been caught dressing up like Nazis with swastika signs. They've now been caught. We told you this a month ago. It's been mainstream news since last Monday for over a week and a half. They have been caught, and they, they did what they promised. They went out to Tea Parties from New Mexico to Texas to Oregon uh, to New York City, to D.C., in Nazi outfits, with swastikas. We've shown you those photos and videos. The Black Congressional Caucus has been caught going out trying to start fights. No one's calling them N-word. No one's spitting on them. This is another form of false flag, but they're not going to stop there. They are going to blow up some federal buildings. They are going to engage in terror attacks, guaranteed. It's the only card they've got to blame it on us, to try to shut down our political speech, because we are telling the truth. We are constitutionalists. We're standing up for the law of the land. And there's nothing these people can do to shut us up but stage events and blame them on us. I mean, 
it is very, very elementary and simple. And coming up in about 20 minutes, I'm going to play an excellent eight-minute analysis uh, when false flags don't fly by James Corbett. Very powerful. I mean, this is this is five stars. This is I give this guy a 99. Okay, and I don't think I'd ever give myself even a 99. Uh, you know, if you're grading a speech, I don't know. I guess that was about a hundred uh, that I did in front of the Bilderberg Group that time uh, in um, in Canada, bullhorning the Bilderberg. But uh, it's as good as it gets. Very powerful, very focused. This is more of what we need to see. Very effective. So that's that's coming up. Let's go ahead and play this short clip of CFR journalist calls Tea Party Talk seditious on Slimeball with Chris Slimanson. Uh, here it is. We just watched Sarah Palin, and she said, un-American. Now, she said it was just his policies, not him. But those words are license words. They're yeah. permission yeah. words. You know, I did, I did a little bit of research just before the show. It's on this little napkin here. I looked up the definition of sedition which is conduct or language inciting rebellion against the authority of the state. And a lot of these statements, especially the ones coming from people like Glenn Beck and to a certain extent Sarah Palin, were right next, right, right up close to being seditious. Well, and, and this is, and you know, and Joe's right, and I, I'll no name another person, you know, name is Bear, you know, who uses this phrase, constantly talks about the Obama administration as a regime. That mm -hmm. phrase, which, which has connotations of tyranny, and what's so interesting about it to me, to get to Nora's point, what is the focus, what's the cause of this? You think back to 1994, there was Ruby Ridge, there was Waco, there were triggering incidents. There's been nothing like that. Okay. Only and they go on and on, uh, basically saying we're terrorists. So if you say, I don't want tyranny, gun control's tyranny, open borders is tyranny, uh, federalization of local police is tyranny, I mean, by every yardstick, and they've had big universities do an analysis and find the U.S. is the number six police state in the world. I mean, is Mexico a tyranny? Is North Korea a tyranny? They're ahead of us. North Korea is number one. We're number six, folks, and I don't want to move up towards number one. This is not a uh, laurel or a prize. You know, it's kind of like they say in that uh, movie, um, Talladega Nights, if... You know, if you're not uh, first, you're last. Or what's the what's the corny thing they say in that movie? <laughs> you're not first, you're last. Yeah. Uh, well, no. This is something where we want to be last. We don't want to be first for this. And it's both parties. I mean, Republicans who are mainline Republicans, they should love Obama. Continuing wars, continuing secret arrest, continuing torture, hiring nothing but lobbyists. Uh, continuing, you know, all of this corruption, continuing all of Bush's executive orders, continuing Bush's cybersecurity, takeover of the Internet. There is no difference with Obama on real issues. Oh, oh Bush was supposedly anti-abortion, kind of halfway. He was for the assault weapons ban. So there they are saying sedition. Now, this is what Michael Savage Again, I rarely play other talk show hosts, but when Rush Limbaugh says Obama may stage events and Michael Savage is saying it every week now, I mean, this is from Monday. Uh, we've got to give credit where credit's due because these guys reach tens of millions of people. And I don't like being alone. I don't want to be the leader. I, I don't want to be the one guy who's right. I don't want to be the uh, one person who's got the courage to say this. OK, I, believe me. I like to walk point, but I'd like to rotate with other people. I like there to be more targets out there. I don't like to be the only person telling the truth here. And so uh, here is Michael Savage talking about this on Monday. Here it is. They want you to react. Don't you understand what uh, Obama's doing with his little men? You can turn it off now. His little men on the left are trying to provoke you into a violent act so that they can declare you the illegitimate ones. Don't take the bait. They want the Tea Party to explode. They have probably sent the Jean provocateurs in there with guns. I can guarantee you that this government is going to do something along those lines, whether it's sooner or later, it's going to happen. And I'll make another prediction on this show right now, because it doesn't take a genius to know what this illegitimate band of gangsters is going to do next. I'll make it very clear for you. This illegitimate group of gangsters is not only going to cause a violent action somewhere in America that is not conducted by the Tea Parties, but by an agent provocateur that they sent into the crowds along the lines of what the left has done from the beginning of the left, okay? But the October surprise that they have in mind for this world is not to be imagined, because they know they're going to lose. If they ever played it fair and square, A, number one, they wouldn't be in power today. That's to start with. If they ever played it fair and square, the illegal All aliens right. never would have been... And he goes on to say they're going to stage a Reichstag event. Now... 
The whole video is up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Why is this important? Well, as soon as the Republicans get back in, they're going to start blowing stuff up. Okay? I mean, this is what governments do now. And we've got a big, dirty, corrupt government who's desperate and who has, what, a 10% approval rating for Congress now? A, a 9% for Nancy Pelosi, even lower than Dick Cheney? When governments get in trouble and they're corrupt, they start staging terror. We're going to cover the history of that coming up in about 12 minutes. Uh, but uh, here's another clip, and we'll uh, play this when we come back from break. Washington Post writer, Internet journalism is...